Renegade Conversations, Season 3, Episode 16. My guest today is funny, engaging, and she calls it as she sees it. She has overcome many challenges, which she shares in a practical, no-holds-barred way. Hold on to your seats and get ready to be inspired. My name is Meryl Cook. I'm an artist, a renegade, and the host and creator of Renegade Conversations. My mission is to provide thought-provoking, fearless, and fun discussions with remarkable female rebels who are shaking things up in their own respective fields. My hope is to make you question the norms and ignite your own renegade spirit. This episode of Renegade Conversations is sponsored by Mary Jane Copps. Mary Jane has been writing her own paycheck since 1985, first as a freelance real estate journalist and then launching a tech startup in 1987. She embraced her alter ego, the phone lady, in 2006. She works with clients throughout North America and in Australia, England, and France, giving them the skill to inspire valuable conversations with clients customers, and prospects. Mary Jane has been profiled as a communications expert by Australian Broadcasting, Fox and Friends, Harry Enten's CNN podcast, Margins of Error, as well as by the Wall Street Journal, the National Post, the Globe and Mail, CBC, CTV, Global, as well as other publications, television and radio outlets, including, this is my favorite, a very silly skit on This Hour Has 22 Minutes. Mary Jane is also the author of The Phone Book, Essential Telephone Communication Skills, and writes a bi-weekly blog on sales and customer service communication skills. My next guest, Debbie Adams, is a Renaissance woman who has been challenging assumptions for more than four decades. She was one of the first cohorts of women to become a mechanic in the Canadian Army. This non-traditional career choice taught her about early conditioning. Vision loss interrupted her career and Debbie decided to go to university, graduating at the age of 45 with distinction. She's a sought after speaker and the published author of four books, including Law of Attraction for the Skeptic and Money Mindset. Debbie enjoys sharing the message that success begins in the mind with a focus on money mindset and first generation success. She likes to ask, what do you need to unlearn today? So welcome, welcome Debbie. It's so nice to see you again. Meryl, I'm delighted to be here. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, my pleasure. Debbie, you and I have met many times over the years through networking. I followed you on social media. I've read loads of your material, and I've picked your brain on more than one occasion, I must admit. <laughs> and you also own one of my Wild Women uh, mats and uh, fiber art pieces, and so I'm, I'm assuming that makes you a collector. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm really happy to include you as one of my Wise Women friends. So thank you so much for agreeing to hop on Zoom and have this conversation. Oh, it's quite an honor. Thank you, Mary. Um, oh, you're welcome. So Debbie, what does being a renegade mean to you? Um, I love this question. I I don't know if I would have like called myself a renegade woman in the past, but but I do love it now. I you know it's what? grown on me. Uh, when I think about the renegade women uh, that I knew or um, that I look up to, I mm -hmm. think about people who are. Uh, you know, coloring outside of the lines, doing things differently. A good example are the women in, you know, I'm a veteran, so I love uh -huh. veteran women. And in World War II, the women veterans went to work in the munitions factories mm -hmm. when the men went off to war. And they were traditionally in the home. But when they did that uh, task, you know, they learned something about themselves and about their own capacity and about the new ways to to have fun and do things differently. It really shook up their lives. Mm -hmm. The men came back home. The women had to go uh, go back into the home and give up those uh -huh. jobs. Yeah. And they um, they weren't satisfied anymore. You know, they were satisfied prior to taking on this task. Mm -hmm. When I think about being a renegade woman, I think about that 
willing to try new things, uh-huh. not uh, going along with social norms. Somebody who steps outside of the box and uh, and lives life on her own terms. Yeah, lovely, lovely. I love that answer. Thank you. And have you always been a renegade? No, no. <laughs> really? I'm shocked. <laughs> Because you sure are now. <laughs> you know, um, Meryl, when I was 17, finished high school, I um, there wasn't a lot of opportunities. And frankly speaking, there weren't a lot of women role models, you know, in the community. The only thing I had ever been exposed to with regards to working women were teachers, um, mm-hmm. maybe a nurse. Mm-hmm. And um, admin work, clerical work. A lot of people were doing that kind of yeah. stuff. You know, it was in the days of stenography and whatnot. Yeah. So I knew I was going to join the military early on. I had been a cadet. You know, it's what I wanted to do. I wanted to, like, get away and have this adventure. And when they asked what I wanted, what trade I wanted to be, I said, admin or finance. You know, that's kind of like all I could think about. I didn't mm-hmm. have any university or college education. and But anyway, as it worked out that those trades were not open for two years. So they said to me, you know, you can't join now. If you want to wait two years, we can put your name on the list. But what we do have open now is uh, the military. I just started recruiting for women in trades and mechanic was open. Vehicle technician, they call it. And I said, okay, I'll become that. I'll be that. (laughs) I'm into that. What I was a very traditional woman, you know, I knew my place Mm -hmm. uh, going into a male dominated environment Mm. but what that opportunity did for me at a very young age was like those women in world war ii i learned about myself and about my capacity and i became Mm. somebody else as a result of that new conditioning being taken Mm -hmm. outside of my environment learning new things about myself and you just can't you know you can't put that back in the box it's much like buying a uh, air mattress from (laughs) (laughs) you're not getting it back (laughs) No, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so no, definitely not a, you know, I, I was made into a renegade woman through circumstance. Uh-huh. Excellent. Excellent. And so so that's one impact of being a renegade is it opened this door for you. But what other impacts has being a renegade had on your life and your career? Maybe some of the positives, but also the challenges <clears> that it <throat> might have presented by uh, stepping outside the lines. Absolutely. Like once, once I became... Uh, you're probably more aware. I'm going to say it would take a long time after that before I became, I'm a recovering people pleaser. I'll tell you that. So, you know, we're not often um, bucking the norms, but um, now, now, you know, I'm so excited. I I think uh, our sixties are our best years. Like we, Mm -hmm. we know who we are and what we can do. And I think being a renegade woman is excellent. But it wasn't without its challenges Mm -hmm. because you're different. You're not like the women, for example, that choose not to do the non-traditional things or or who choose to just live by what's prescribed. Mm -hmm. So you're different in that sense. And I was in a male-dominant environment, but um, the men I worked with had spouses Mm -hmm. who weren't like us. Mm -hmm. You know, we were a different a different creature. We knew stuff about ourselves. We we were given amazing opportunities and and it was often um, a lonely place. Mm-hmm. That's the point I'm getting at. It was often, uh, you know, you're going to do this uh, um, and you love it. And, you know, in my 20s, I was jumping out of planes, riding dirt bikes, like doing all kinds of amazing things that uh-huh. people my age were not doing. Yes. And uh, you didn't know where you belonged. Yeah, because it, you didn't it, quite fit with the guys and you didn't also fit with the spouses. Right. Yeah. Oh, definitely not. Right. Yes, definitely not. Uh-huh. Yeah, and uh, so you felt that you felt that, uh, or or we felt that d- the difference, mm-hmm. you know. And I I always have a lot of compassion for people who are trying to fit into places when mm-hmm. they don't feel like they belong. So there was that. Mm-hmm. It would be years before I really had the tools. It wouldn't be until I went to university in my forties. I was forty five when I graduated from university. Uh, it wouldn't be until I got those tools that I could really evaluate my life, like look back. And, mm-hmm. and probably extract some of the wisdom and understand why I was feeling the way that I was feeling at, mm-hmm. at those points. But, um, you know, but along the way, you get used to it. 
it's all good. And what about now, you know, as a woman in your 60s, you know, you're, you're still pretty renegade-ish. And, uh, and what's it like for you as, as a woman of our age? I am way more renegade. -ish. I am a renegade and I <laughs> love it. Yeah. Um, what it's like now is, and, and I know um, we talked about, or we'll talk about, uh, you know, advice you give to people. And, uh -huh. and that's one of the pieces of advice is you have to find the others. You have uh -huh. to find the others that are like you. Yeah. And when you do, um, you know, it's a process. It, it isn't, a, it's not a flicking of a switch because, the people that you love or the people that you've been working with or grown up with or raised mm -hmm. children with, you know, they're important people in your life, mm -hmm. but you're not fulfilled with just that. If yeah. you're a renegade, yeah. so you have to find your people and you have to understand that um, you're going to find joy and fulfillment and everything that you need in that mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there is also that double-edged sword, right? Never a benefit without a burden. <laughs> the benefit is you have your people but the burden yeah. is sometimes you have to let go of people yes 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 and you know for me uh renegade conversations is about finding my community and finding my people and and reaching out to people that I know you and I know each other but other people that I don't know and reaching out and saying hey <laughs> you want to talk about being a renegade and and yeah. it is about building community yeah absolutely and I have listened to some of your podcasts and I love I love watching you evolve into this role. This is your spot. This thank you. Spot. Yes, I'm loving it. So thank, thank you so you. much. So we're going to take a short break for a message from our sponsor, our very favorite uh, Mary Jane Cops. Yes. And when we come back, I have some fun questions for you. Hi, fellow renegades. I'm Mary Jane Cops otherwise known as The Phone Lady. And I'm delighted to be sponsoring Meryl's Renegade Conversations because I'm all about the conversations. I work with clients throughout North America, in England, France, and Australia, working with teams and individuals to help them inspire amazing conversations with their prospects, their clients, their customers, even their family and friends. Wanna learn more? Head over to my website, thephonelady.com and we can also connect on LinkedIn. I'm the only Mary Jane Cops on LinkedIn. I look forward to meeting you. Now let's get back to Meryl and her guest. So welcome back <laughs> and uh, now we have some fun questions to get into. So Ooh. Debbie, did you bring a drink to share? Yes, I absolutely brought a drink to share. And um, But I really want to share my cup <laughs> and not, not the drink. And can you read that? Yes, it says, believe it to see it. That's correct. Believe it to see it. So I wanted to, I'm going to tell you what's in my cup, but I love, you know, mindset stuff. And uh, this goes along with being a renegade, right? You yeah. can, if you believe it, you can see it. I mean, some people are holding themselves back in life, Meryl, because they don't think it's possible for them. And mm -hmm. I got to tell you, anything is possible. I the agree. only difference between us and people who do amazing things is they do it but in my cup is bubbly raspberry or <laughs> bubbly <laughs> raspberry <laughs> bubbly oh nice nice oh good well i'll put that link in uh on my website notes so yeah great thank you for sharing that i love the bubbly drinks i don't know if you say bubbly or bubbly but uh <laughs> or buble <laughs> yeah anyway on that note, in grade two, Debbie, what kind of a kid were you? Oh, my. I can't really remember grade two, <laughs> per se. But um, I was uh, a sensitive child mm -hmm. and uh, definitely like a bit of a goody two-shoes, mm -hmm. uh, doing everything I was supposed to be doing, not a troublemaker, and um, maybe a little bit shy, introvert, mm -hmm. not popular. Uh, you know yeah that's hard this is a question that I often ask when I speak or when I teach a workshop and that is uh and helps people to just think outside the box and it's is there a line or a shape that would define you so if someone were to draw your life or you or you were to draw it yourself what would it look like what would that line mm -hmm. or shape look like I'm a doodler and uh my note taking is not, you know, I'd never give my notes to anybody because they would make no sense. Uh -huh. However, you know, in the midst of my uh, taking notes or, or journaling, 
I doodle to get mm -hmm. the thoughts out. And the doodle looks like a mess. Like, well, you're a fiber art lady, but like a ball of wool that's been torn apart by two wild dogs. <laughs> and that that would be the shape. And, ah. and to me, that represents um, the journey on life. You know, it's not linear. It's like up and down and in and out. Mm -hmm. And you retract yeah. and expand and all of the stuff. And, uh, you know, unpredictability, I you know, I feel like I'm unpredictable mm -hmm. uh, in the sense of somebody observing. Now, having said that, I have a, a really strong um, intuition, you know, a mm -hmm. very clear idea of what I'm doing. And I have, you know, my I, I can sense when I need to do something very, very quickly. So mm -hmm. getting back to the to the the shape, it uh -huh. would be it wouldn't make sense to anybody else. Uh -huh. It would make sense to me. Oh, interesting. And I love that you chose a piece of fiber <laughs> like wool. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's very cool. And um, so it, what it says about you is you've got a lot going on and you know, you know, at the core what you are, but other people may not necessarily know when they glance at the surface. Is that? And um, they may not uh, make sense of the trajectory. Like I'm, I'm a uh, one of the first cohorts of women to become a mechanic in Canada, which I'm very, very proud of. Mm -hmm. But I'm also a woman who's been to law school, and uh, sometimes people can't square the two of us, and they'll think uh, it doesn't make sense. Like she has uh -huh. no idea where she's going. Uh -huh. But the reality is, back to the women in World War II, every experience teaches us something about ourselves. Yeah. And, you know, I may not have continued to become a lawyer, but I certainly took away lots of tools that I continue to use in my life today. I bet. Yeah, so, especially your research skills and things like that. Or uh, understanding about other people and cultures and classes, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, social classes and, mm -hmm. yeah, relational aggression, all kinds of stuff I took away mm -hmm. from there. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Cool. It's a good life. Yeah. Good, good. So, Debbie, what advice do you have for women who want to access more of their inner wild selves or become a little bit more of a renegade? How, how would you suggest they, they uh, get started? Well, I already mentioned the one about like find your people, but that may not be realistic when you're just starting out, you know, but I always like to talk to somebody who's just sitting there. She's kind of like not feeling um, fulfilled in her life. And she has mm -hmm. this uh, yearning to do something, not certain what it is. Well, I think first of all, you have to just take a step. Doesn't it, there's no wrong steps. You're mm -hmm. learning something everywhere that you go. So just take a step. Yeah. From there, you'll pivot again. You can pivot a hundred times in your life if you want to. But the bigger thing is to do the hard stuff. You know, people get up every day and they do the obvious and they mm -hmm. do what everybody else is doing and they do what people are uh, telling them they should do. And mm -hmm. they're not getting the results that they want. Well, mm -hmm. Do, do the difficult stuff on the days when you don't want to do it uh -huh. and then your life will change mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. along the way you'll find your you'll find where you fit mm -hmm. so and instead of doing the difficult stuff. stuff or waiting to do the difficult stuff uh, until you feel good about it it's just do it it's Space. get uncomfortable uh, Meryl you ask about you know whether I was always a renegade and that was definitely not I mean I was forced into entrepreneurship because of vision loss a so shout out to the uh, disabled community mm -hmm. um, and uh, one of the things I had to learn to do the only teaching I had ever done was apprenticing mechanics you mm -hmm. know I passed on that knowledge and 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 it wasn't you know you weren't a sage on the stage or anything you were just mm -hmm showing somebody how to do it and maybe figure out a trick of the trade and passing on information because it was needed. But the thought of getting up in front of people uh, was very scary for me. Uh -huh. And I went to Toastmasters and I didn't fit in. The first time I'd ever met anybody who had been to university and all these professional people that were outside of my strata. Um, and it was uncomfortable. And uh -huh. that first night I thought, what what have I done? Like, I don't belong here. And that's not that, not that long ago, right? It's just mm -hmm. two decades. Mm -hmm. And um, I learned so much there. It opened so many doors and, and gave mm -hmm. me a new view of what was possible. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think doing that tough stuff, like mm -hmm. I went to university at 45, I was living on a disability pension prior to that. And there were people that were saying like, you're not accepting, you're not accepting your limitations. 
you know, you got to get help with that. Well, I do have mental health challenges because, you know, you don't become, you don't be a high performer and then become disabled and transition easily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I just kept doing hard stuff. Yeah. And then one day I, I, you know, it all falls into place and who knows, I've got lots of decades left. Who knows what I'll be. <laughs> exactly. It's so wonderful. And, and as someone who's heard you speak on stage, I mean, you are one impressive lady on stage. Like you would, I would never have known that you haven't been speaking your whole life. Like you you just, you know, when, when you speak, you're funny, you're engaging, you're, you've got the whole audience just quiet because we're all watching you. So um, well done. <laughs> well done. Thank you, Meryl. I've been writing my whole life. So I was always able to write and, and I'm a letter writer. So mm -hmm people have kept my letters because mm -hmm. I, I think I write like I speak but um, I couldn't I could not talk in front of people and mm, my first wonderful. talk was like five minutes and I didn't breathe for the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> oh awesome that's that's very encouraging so Debbie do you have a question for me absolutely I do of course you do <laughs> Um, since you've started this venture, I'm curious to know, you've interviewed a lot of interesting people from different backgrounds. Meryl, what have you learned about yourself by listening to their journeys? Oh, I've learned so much. First of all, I've learned that this is really fun. When I first started it, I thought, okay, I should do this and, and I think it'll be interesting. But I have discovered I love to, to do these conversations. I love uh, I love doing the interviews. I love reaching out to people. Um, I discovered that I do have influence. You know, it's it's kind of like oh, and people are watching them, and my my readers or my my subscribers are increasing, and my views are increasing. So it's it's very exciting. So I've discovered also that um, I can be way more organized than I thought I could be. So <laughs> when when you have uh, when I'm doing the podcast, I'm inviting people, I'm getting sponsors, I'm sending things to the editor, I'm, I'm posting, I'm, you know, so there's a, about 20 steps that, that happen mm -hmm. um, behind every, every podcast. And, uh, and I'm actually quite loving it. And at first, it was completely overwhelming, uh, just all the little steps and the technical things. And, and now it feels um, I won't say second nature, but certainly, um, it's going much more smoothly. And 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 opening doors like it's um, I've received more invitations for speaking and teaching this year than I have in the previous five years already, and we're only six months into the year. So so it's wonderful. Um, it's been great for my my business as well. But uh, but mostly I'm I'm discovering about myself um, kind of what makes me happy, and and this makes me really happy. I love. I just love doing the interviewing and, and reaching out to people. And, and I've, I've maintained some relationships with some of the people that I've met, you know, like Martha Chavez came to town to uh, do her comedy act and we actually met and, you know, it was just wonderful. And, and uh, I've been in email contact with several of the women in the U S that have been guests. And it's just, yeah, I do feel like I'm building this community, which is a lot of fun. Great question. Yeah, I'm not surprised. And I can, I can sense that this, uh -huh. is, this is your place. Yeah. 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 Awesome. So I'm finding myself yet again. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So thank you so much, Debbie, for taking the time to hop on Zoom with me and have this conversation. It's uh, we don't see each other all the time. And uh, we also don't always have time to have a really in-depth and real conversation. So I so appreciate your time. So thank you. Very oh, much. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Meryl. Have a great day. Yeah, you're welcome. I hope hearing Debbie's story of resilience and reinvention has inspired you to embrace more of your renegade self. If you need a little help getting started, please reach out to me. This episode was sponsored by Mary Jane Copps. Mary Jane has been writing her own paycheck since 1985, first as a freelance real estate journalist and then launching a tech startup in 1987. Mary Jane embraced her alter ego, the phone lady, in 2006. She works with clients throughout North America and in Australia, England, and France 
giving them the skill to inspire valuable conversations with clients, customers, and prospects. Mary Jane has been profiled as a communications expert by Australian Broadcasting, Fox and Friends, Harry Enton's CNN podcast, Margins of Error, as well as by the Wall Street Journal, National Post, The Globe and Mail, CBC, CTV, Global, as well as other publications, television, and radio outlets, including a very silly skit on This Hour Has 22 Minutes. She is also the author of The Phone Book, Essential Telephone Communication Skills, and writes a bi-weekly blog on sales and customer service communication skills. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more Renegade Conversations. Also available wherever you get your podcasts as an audio version. Thanks so much for listening.